Hello again. Um, I'm going to make a slightly different video today, um, i.e. not a contest entry, but um, or um, uh, a reply to a, a vinyl tag or anything like that, but just something that I've kind of been thinking about for a while, which was um, last year I discovered a new artist, new to me anyway, someone that had been around for a while but had not, not been on my radar. And um, the reason it's quite um, uh, notable for me is that it's a jazz musician. Um, I mean, I've been listening to jazz probably since the mid mid to late 80s, I guess. Um, and uh, most of my jazz listening um, was um, albums like uh, Miles Davis, um, that one dates back to then, or um, the usual suspects like John Coltrane, um, um, more recently, you know, going through back catalogue of um, uh, Blue Note re-releases, which have been so beautiful, so um, this is one of the... Uh, so this is a Joe Henderson Blue Note re-release, and um, this is a Chet Baker record from uh, Sam's Records in France. Again, a beautiful pressing of this beautiful music, but it's mostly music from the 50s and 60s, to be honest with, me, with, with you. And it's that, it was that style of jazz that really appealed to me. I think there was a kind of a bit of a jazz reunion that went on in... Um, in the 80s in, in London. Um, I was going to see some bands play at Ronnie Scott's, and which is a jazz club in, in Soho in London. And um, there were kind of jazz influences in the charts. Um, I remember David Bowie made Absolute Beginners and there was a kind of jazz references in that. And, um, and there was a club called Gas's Rockin' Blues and there was a band called the Chevalier Brothers playing. And they all wore zoot suits and, um, and they had kind of glockenspiel players and it was very a kind of jazzy thing you know i would be seen occasionally wearing suits and um, kipper ties and you know there was a vibe going on and we were listening to a lot of jazz and it was mostly jazz from the i'd say from the 50s and 60s of the, of the kind of classic blue note era um, and to be honest with you, a lot of the jazz which came later, um, probably 80s, 90s kind of contemporary jazz or jazz from the, maybe just from the 70s through the 90s, um, I wasn't really hearing much that really uh, struck a chord with me. Um, lots of the kind of free jazz which had gone beyond the kind of um, bebop or the modal stuff of um, Miles Davis and his compatriots. Um, didn't really strike a, a chord with with me in a way. Um, so anyway, um, I was very excited last year when um, my son Tom, who knows my musical tastes pretty well, he he brought me uh, uh, this album, which is um, by. A young trumpet player called Matthew Halsall and a band that he's put together um, and um, this really uh, took me back to some of the more um, the more kind of soulful the more um, eclectic stuff the stuff that felt a bit more ethereal and um, uh, I could try to describe his music to you, but it's so difficult, isn't it? I mean, if you like Miles Davis, um, if you like Pharaoh Saunders, if you like a lot of the, uh, the Blue Note stuff, um, particularly if you like quite chilled jazz, not jazz that's going to, really um uh challenge you or um um 
that is really pushing the envelope of what jazz can be if you like jazz that is just beautiful and soulful and uh, ethereal um, then I think you'll like his work very much um, in a way I couldn't possibly hope to describe his music I'll, I'll try and play a little bit for you give you an idea um, but if I could describe it then you know if, what, what would be the point of buying records anyway um, for me, music is like a magic, really. It kind of can affect my moods. It can calm me or excite me or lift me or just thrill me to the very core, really. And I don't know how it does that. And I don't really know, want to know why it does that. Um, if I knew uh, more about um, the kind of... Um, the basis or the uh, the workings of music maybe I could describe to you uh, in a kind of technical way what it is that um, this particular jazz musician does um, but um, in a way it kind of to kind of explain it or to understand it in that way is to kind of demystify it in a way and I quite like the mystery of music I, I don't really want to know why it uh, it has the hold on me that it does, but um, uh, I like that it does. So uh, I'm I'm happy to be uh, to be in its thrall and um, to find the whole thing rather akin to some kind of magic, um, and uh, that's good enough for me. about it down, about him down, so that I don't kind of get it wrong, basically. Um, so he's a composer, a trumpeter, a producer and a DJ, and he's also founded his own uh, record label, uh, which is called Gondwana Records. Um, uh, so he's quite an enterprising young chap. Um, he's born in 1983, so from my perspective he's a, he's a baby, really. Um, and he has a, a kind of an unflashy, soulful playing style. Um, I wrote a few notes down here. It draws on the heritage of British jazz, spiritual jazz, Valis Coltrane, Pharaoh Saunders particularly. I think there are real kind of um, parallels you could draw between some of Pharaoh Saunders' work and um, Matthew Halsall's albums. Um, but he also DJs and um, there are kind of undertones of perhaps dance music perhaps in some of his work or I was trying to think about why some of his albums feel quite contemporary and yet um, um, it is basic jazz and I think it's the fact that the basic melodies he's working with and chord structures are quite modern whereas a lot of the early stuff they're kind of they take jazz classics and they work within those but stylistically they often feel like things that were um, composed in the 1950s and 60s whereas um, Matthew's work feels much more contemporary than that 
Um, so um, after I got this initial album, which is Salute to the Sun, um, I started kind of going back in time through his catalogue. And um, this is his this is his first album, which was uh, re-released in 2019, I think. Um, yeah, so remixed and remastered with bonus material uh, in 2019. And uh, this has artwork by the Designers Republic. They've done a rather beautiful typography on this. And it's on two two records, nothing much going on on these uh, inner sleeves. Um, and this features um, so Matthew Housel on trumpet, uh, Roger Wickham on flute, Nat Birchall uh, on um, saxophone, Adam Farrell on piano, piano, John Thorne on bass, Gavin Barris on bass, and Gaz Hughes on drums, and certainly Gavin Barris, I think, is still playing with him today. And they seem to have a very good, um, almost like a telepathy between the two of them, I have to say. Um, so this was re-released on vinyl in 2019, um, which is called um, Sending My Love. And then... Uh, one of my favourite of his albums, really, is um, this album, which is called Colour Yes, which um, has some beautiful artwork as well on the inner sleeves. These inner sleeves, they feature uh, artwork by um, do -ba -do -ba -do, um, Forms Work Studio. Uh, Forms Work Studio, I think, is the uh, is the work of a, um, a guy called John Llewellyn, um, who studied typography at LCP, London School of Printing, actually, amongst probably with some of my friends. Anyway. Um, so the the, uh, the sleeve designs on this were designed by uh, Ian Anderson of um, uh, the Designers Republic and artwork by uh, Form Studio, Form Work Studio. Uh, very beautiful it is too. So that was followed um, in um, 2011 by this album, which is called On The Go. Um, this sleeve, I think, was designed by um, uh, Matthew's brother, Daniel, although it doesn't actually say it, or actually kind of credited on, on the sleeve. Um, I noticed that his brother, Daniel, has designed several sleeves for him, so I imagine that might be, might be Daniel's work. Um, and uh, this um, this got uh, awarded a uh, winner of the best jazz album of the year by Giles Peterson's Worldwide Awards in 2011 and nominated for the best jazz album at the Mobo Awards uh, 2011. Um, so clearly getting a lot of recognition uh, at that point. Um, Again, another very beautiful, soulful work, um, this particular one. Um, this was followed up in um, 2012 by uh, this particular album, 
that down, which is called uh, Fletcher Moss Park. And um, there is um, Daniel himself probably in the park, I dare say. Um, and this is quite interesting because he he's he's adding to the um, the usual list of of his band his players. Um, there's also a rather inner sleeve picture. There's some notes here, and um, so this one adds a violin, cello, flute to the usual mix of trumpet, sax, piano, bass, drums, and harp, um, and that really kind of adds more interesting sonics to the thing and gives um, slightly more um, space and airiness to the to the mix I'd say um, um, so at this point we've got um, Matthew on trumpet Nat Birchall on saxophone as before uh, Lisa Mallet on flute Rachel Gladwin on harp Adam Fairhall on piano, Tom Taz Modi on piano, Gavin Barris on bass, and um, Gaz Hughes on drums, Luke Flowers on drums, Holly Simpson on violin, Devinder Singh on violin, and Adrian Winiski, excuse me if I pronounced that wrong, on cello. Um, and um, most of these, um, most of this album, and most of his albums have been recorded at um, a studio called um, 80 Hertz Studios, which is in Manchester. Um, so there's that one from uh, 2012. Then we've got uh, When the World Was One, uh, which is this, this album here. Um, the sleeve was designed by um, Daniel Housel. Yeah. Uh, with a cover which is um, rather reminiscent of a Joseph Albers painting, I'd say. Um, and um, this uh, this one adds um, flute and um, koto um, to the kind of mix, um, and is very beautiful again. Then um, we get this album, which is uh, called Oneness, uh, which is very very interesting. Uh, it, Includes three uh, individual discs in here. So the first one is called uh, Oneness. The, uh, the second one is called Tunus. <laughs> and the final one is called Threeness. Um, and some of the interesting things about this one is that um, um, this adds a, in places, adds a sitar and a, and a tabla to the um, uh, to the overall mix. Um, I think this is particularly in um, uh, threeness, which is that final one, and. Um, so there are, there's a song called Stories from India in here and, and The Traveller. So you get a much more kind of Indian essence to that, even though it's still jazz and it's still very, um, very beautiful kind of rhythmic, um, tuneful jazz.
slightly more kind of world music sense to these particular albums, for, for, for sure. Um, this artwork features um, painting by uh, Ludovic Philippon. And uh, that the whole package, again, has been put together by the Designers Republic. Um, very nice typography inside, very simple. And um, very nicely printed on, uh, on lovely, um, feels like cartridge paper, card. Um, and then there was a, there was a gap of about five years in their production. I think I, um, I think Matthew Halsall was um, touring a lot and um, um, was finding it more difficult in a way, um, and probably lockdown did, didn't help. Um, but he kind of rebuilt a band that was based far more closer to where he lives in Manchester. So um, Salute the Sun was, was brought out in 2020. Um, and this includes um, kind of, it starts off with kind of sounds which feel like they're, they're from the jungle or something. Um, it feels very warm and, and rich and, and I wrote some notes, so I'll read them. Uh, exotic, warm, tropical feeling. Um, so it was released in November 2020, um, and it marked yeah the debut of a new band, handpicked ensemble featuring some of Manchester's finest young musicians. Um, so the album drew energy from the band's weekly sessions and was, was inspired by Halsell's level of nature. Lush and spiritual, it received universal praise. But Halson and his band were frustrated that they were unable to share their beautiful new sound live with an audience. So in 2021, they broadcast a very special concert film in aid of the charity Mind. Um, and that was the basis for the live version of this album, uh, which I showed on another video. Um, is the, basically the same music, but um, but re recorded one off in a, in a live performance. It's been a real treat to find uh, a jazz musician who uh, is not only playing music um, that I really like, um, he's also uh, playing live. Um, sadly, I can't get to go and see Chet Baker or um, Miles Davis or uh, lots of the Blue Note guys whose uh, albums I play regularly, but uh, Matthew Halsell's out there recording music now and he's playing live so I have tickets to go and see him in the summer and uh, I'm massively looking forward to that so um, a little recommendation from me is um, check out Matthew Halsell either this one or any of the others I've shown um, or this one or possibly one of my favourites of his is his second album. Colour. Yes. Um, and uh, I think it's very good stuff indeed and uh, gets my hearty recommendation. So um, thanks very much for watching. I'll uh, see you again soon. Okay, thank you. Bye.